be together again. We've been together since Wednesday night, although you were seen over the screen. I didn't see your face, but you saw my face. Is it a good face? Tell me, good face? We'll see more of one another in Jesus' name. I've heard us are connecting from Leeds and Liverpool, Manchester, and Birmingham, Newcastle, and all the other places, uh, Glasgow. I may not remember your particular location, Aberdeen. Uh, we're together now. We're going to dig deep into the word of God. God is going to do something in your life. Yeah. And he'll bring, if you need rain, he'll give you rain. Yeah. If you need sunshine, he'll give you sunshine. Yeah. Great things are going to happen in your life in Jesus' name. Do you think you are ready? Yes. And you really want to collect a great thing from the Lord? We're going to have a great time together. Let's close our eyes to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, how wonderful to be together today. What a beautiful day. And we thank you, Lord, for all our leaders, all our pastors, all our overseers. We thank you for all our workers and all these members of the choir. Everyone, Lord, serving you in one capacity or the other. We pray, Lord, as they shuffle some of their service, consecration to you, you shuffle back blessings unto them in Jesus' name. And all our people who are here, newcomers, invitees, everyone, we pray that this will be a great and wonderful day in Jesus' name. Feel our cups to overflowing. And let the blessing pass through us to members of our family. And to everyone around us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said... You know, they told me that, you know, I just learned that uh, deeper life uh, here were charismatic, Pentecostal, evangelical, biblical, everything. And if you put all that together, your amen should be fourfold. Now give me a good amen. You are there already. You can see that God bless you. This morning, I'm going to, uh, we're going to search the word of God together. Because it's very necessary. Because I discover a question in the Bible that God himself asked. And as I search through, looking for where I can find a similar question, I find that that question is another part of the Bible too. And then I find the answer all over the Bible. And we'll not be able to do justice to the question we're asking. If we do not go through what the word of God is revealing concerning this great question. Turn with me your Bible to Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32. And I'm reading there from verse 26 and verse 27. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Here is the almighty God that challenged Jeremiah, a great prophet in the Old Testament. And he said, Jeremiah, hear this. I am. It's, he is the always I am. The ever living I am. And the one that was and is and will forever be. On the first day of the creation, he said, I am. And at the time he appealed, he appeared to Moses, he was the I am. And then when he comes to Jeremiah now, he's still the great I am. And then you come to Revelation, he's still the great almighty I am. And he says, I am the Lord God almighty. Now tell me, Jeremiah, is there anything too hard for me? There must have been something in the land of Israel. A concern in the minds of the people of God. And Daniel used a word. I didn't want to use the word, but I'll just throw it at you. Daniel said, my cogitations troubled me. If you've never heard that before, it means the thoughts I had. 
The concerns I had, I thought about everything. I looked at my surrounding. I looked at the nation of Israel at the time I'm living. And I look at all the other nations and I then began to wonder. And he said, my thoughts, my bewilderment, my astonishment, my cogitations troubled me. And it's because the children of Israel, they were troubled at this time. And he looked at everything around them. That's why God said, Jeremiah, why are you so bothered and bewildered? Why are you so worried and anxious? Why is it you are thinking as if you've come to the end of the road? Jeremiah now tell me, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? What other time did God himself say that to challenge a patriarch, a prophet, to challenge the people and to say, what are you thinking about? What problems do you have on your hands that makes you so worried and anxious as if the world has come almost to an end? Is there anything you had for me? Genesis chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 14. In Genesis chapter 18, we're looking at verse 14. Is anything you had for the Lord? Here is a question again. And what had happened here is Sarah now was old. And Abraham was old. And biologically, scientifically, they were not expecting a child anymore. And yet the Lord called Abraham and he said, come out. Sometimes when you lock yourself in, you don't see too much. I want you to come out here. And then he came out, look up. Then he looked up because many times you're looking down, you're looking back, you're looking to the left or to the right. There are times you stop looking back, looking around, looking down, look up and look at the stars and begin to count. Lord, you are giving me an insurmountable problem. How can I count the stars? All right, that's what I wanted to get from you. All your children will be as these uncountable stars, Lord. Tell me that again and see I'm an old man and my wife is an old man. How shall that be? That's what brought this question. Is there anything to your heart for the Lord? That's the challenge the Lord is bringing to you today. As you look at your family background. As you look at your circumstances. As you look at the things that you're trying to chase and get. And it's like the mirage of life. Just before you get to it, it's gone. And then you are saying, is that ever possible? Let me bring you back to your dreams when you are much, much younger. And you are like Joseph I spoke about the other day. And the Lord gave you a big dream before you came to this country. And you had this kind of ambition and desire, destiny, that this is where I'm going to get you. But now, the way the clouds are and the way the circumstances are, you are thinking, is that ever possible? Why don't you sit beside Joseph and let's sit beside him now in the dungeon. Now, Joseph, what do you think? All those dreams you had, all the ambition you had, what do you think about it now? Is that still possible? Really, frankly, I cannot tell. I didn't know I'll find myself in a dungeon like this, in a valley like this. This is not what I dreamt about. That's why the question is coming to you and coming to me. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? By the time we're finished today, you'll find there's nothing too hard for the Lord. He can take on any challenge in your life. Any difficulty in your life, he'll get through it today. And all those things that bothered you, that were worried about, that were anxious about, today is the day of solution to every problem. Is anything to your heart for the Lord? That's the message today. I'm going to deal with the message. You know, I always have my three points. One, two, three. If, uh, if it's not up to three, I'll make it up. I'll just have to add it until it becomes three. And if I came and gave you two points to say the pastor did not prepare today, and I want to tell you I really prepared. I knew you were coming. And I had to throw all this at you, but you must be ready to swallow it. Are you ready? you'll get it. Number one, the question among God's people. The question among God's people. In the hearts of God's people, there had been a question, a concern. And they have been thinking about all this, the worry, the anxiety that makes them to feel, look at what God is promising. Look at what God says he's going to do. Look at the place God says he's taking us to. 
Do you see yourself? I can't see myself there. Do you see yourself ever achieving this and having this and possessing this? No, I can't see myself there. That's the reason why, as they were wondering in their hearts, the questions they were asking, the concern that they had, that's why God brought the question to the number two now, our comprehension of God's promises. Our comprehension of God's promises. Number three, our confidence in his glorious power. Our confidence in his glorious power. We have opened our Bible to Genesis chapter 18. Let's stay there and read now from verse 12. Genesis chapter 18, reading from verse 12. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, At I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Saying, shall I have, shall I of a shorty bear a child which I'm old? Then you have verse 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? It was the question in verse 13 that produced or generated the question in verse 14. In the mind of Sarah, in the mind of Abraham, we're too old to have a miracle now. We're too old to have laughter, joy, icy coming into our lives. That's why God said, why are you thinking like that? Why are you limiting God? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? And let's look at Second Kings chapter 7 verse 2. The question among God's people that generated the question from the Almighty God himself. Why he said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? In Second Kings chapter 7 verse 2. Then a lord, on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God, and said, Behold, if the lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? There had been a terrible famine, and there had been in a terrible need in the nation. And it appeared there was no cloud in the sky. And there was no rain coming. And no crops anywhere. And people were dying of hunger. In fact, it got to the point that people, even tender women, were not so tender anymore. They were boiling, killing and boiling their children for food. Can you think about that? All of a sudden, the prophet of God appeared and said, By this time tomorrow, 24 hours, things are going to change. That's why this, this man said, ah, why well, you raising our hope and you are going to dash our hopes against the rock? How is that possible? Even if the Lord will open the windows in heaven, well, that, how can that be? That's why the Lord is asking you. When you think you're already at your limit, impossible. How can this happen? How can this happen? You know, the other day, I'm talking about you now, you had a dream, and you know, it looked funny to you. Then you woke up in the morning, then you called the person near you, you said, look at the kind of dream I had at this age, at this age. Look at the kind of dream I had. If this dream had come 15 years ago of course i would have accepted it but look at this one isn't this funny no I, I, i'm not going to say it's funny isn't this wonderful that at this time the lord will come to you now and say look at this this is coming and it's coming i said it's coming and that, that's what the man said even if the Lord will open the windows of how can that be because he was limiting the power of the almighty God that's why God then replied with a question why are you thinking like that I see if it will not be is anything too hard for me what's the answer no nothing is too hard for the Lord we're looking at Luke chapter 1 the question that brought God's question in Luke chapter 1, verse 18, Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. You see, they're always going back to the natural. They're always going back to the tangible. They're always going back to what you can see and touch and taste. They're always going back to what we call sense knowledge. 
sense knowledge what you feel what you see what you hear what you touch and Zechariah said angel i hear you but why didn't you come earlier it's too late I'm an old man now. And Elizabeth, my wife, is too old to have the experience we are talking about. And he said, how can this be? Whereby shall I know this? That's why the question is coming from God. Why do you talk like that? What do you think like that? What do you limit yourself and limit your faith and limit the almighty God? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Give me the answer again. No. Look at verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be? You make me to wonder. And you make me even to become bewildered. And you want me to, to be anxious. How can that be? Because she said, Seeing I know not a man. You see, when you come to an impossible situation that everybody will tell you, don't raise your hope so high you're deceiving yourself. Science says you are wrong. And all the history of the world says you are wrong. The experience of man, since man was born into this world, the experience of man says you are wrong. Don't hope like that. You're, you're, kind of, you're going to de destroy yourself. And that's why you, all these people were just like you and me, men and women of like passions as we are. And they began to ask the Lord the question. When the Lord showed them, he was going to do something extraordinary. Something unimaginable, something incredible, something impossible for man. They always ask the question, how shall this be seen that this doesn't follow after scientific knowledge? And they were told in that same chapter 1 verse 37, for with God nothing shall be impossible. For with God, tell me out loud, nothing shall be impossible. Let's come back to Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah, you see Jeremiah had, had a big, a big problem on his hand. And because of that big problem, he had been thinking a particular way. In fact, Jeremiah got to the position where he said, I don't think I want to preach again. No point preaching. I don't think I want to declare the word of God to anybody again because I cannot see any hope. There's no use declaring the word of God to the people because no change is ever going to happen. And then he almost saw the Babylonians, that's Nebuchadnezzar, coming with his army. And he said, these people, Israel is gone. Forget about Israel. Lord, send me to another place. Send me to another ministry. And send me to another people that still have hope. As for the children of Israel, they are hopeless. And then God said, are you in the council of God? Did you have a private conference the other week with the Almighty God? Were you in a private committee with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and the angels? Why do you talk like that? Is there anything too hard for me? You know, sometimes you want to quit your family. Because everything, you say, Pastor, this family, since I came into this family, if you know what I've heard, what I've seen, what I've felt, if you know what I've gone through, you'll be wondering why I stayed until this time. Now I've made up my mind. It's all over. And then when you say it's all over, and then God comes to you and says, let's start all over again. And we can start all over again. You say, Lord, there's no point. I prayed. I fasted. I visited Pastor so-and-so. And evangelist so-and-so prayed for me. And uh, apostle so-and-so prayed about this problem. Now that we have got to this stage, I want to live my life. And then God says, stay where you are. Something is going to happen. Yeah. And things are going to change. That's the situation that Jeremiah got to. And then Jeremiah said, I will not preach again. I will not give any false hope to anybody again. Israel is gone. Forget about Israel. That's when God said, Jeremiah, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything, is there anything under the sun difficult for me, hard for me that I cannot do? Is there anything in your life today that the Lord cannot deal with? He will deal with everything. In fact, you'll be surprised. Your testimony will surprise you yourself. 
will surprise the rest of us because you are just beginning a new journey with the almighty God. Let's come to this Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 23. This is a man that wanted to give up. Maybe I should read it to you because uh, those of us who are not familiar with this great prophet Jeremiah, you say, I never heard that, that Jeremiah wanted to give up. Jeremiah chapter 20, before I come to the verse I want to read. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. I said, I'm through. I preached my last sermon. I've given my last message. I've seen the faces of those people for the last time. I'll never get to them again. Then he said, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. And that's the predicament in which Jeremiah found himself. And that's the reason why God came to him and said, Jeremiah, why are you giving up hope? I'm not through with Israel. And if not, sin, why are you giving up on yourself, on your husband, on your wife, on your children? Wherever those children are now, God is not through yet. Is he going to do something? And he said, and if you're doubting, how can he do it? With all that I've done for this child, look at where the child is now. That's why God says, is there anything too hard for the Lord, for me? Now, Jeremiah chapter 20, 23. Jeremiah 23, I'm reading from verse 3. It says in verse 3, And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries whither I have driven them. And I will bring them again to their falls, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And that's what surprised Jeremiah. That's why Jeremiah was wondering, Oh God, Israel of all nations... The people of Israel, of all kinds of people, why don't you choose another nation and do whatever you want to do? He says, no, I'm still stuck with Israel. They will be fruitful. You will be fruitful. And they will increase and you will increase. Then it says in verse 4, And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, says the Lord. It says they will come to a situation where the plenty, the abundance they used to have, they are going to have that abundance again. In Jeremiah chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 6, For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them and not pull them down. I will plant them and not pluck them up. I will give them an heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart heart. That's why God said, Jim, I don't give up. Don't give up on them. There's a brighter future coming. And there's a great demonstration of the love and the affection of God coming upon the people. And you are, if you have not enjoyed your ministry, you are going to enjoy the ministry. And great things are going to happen. So, this is not the time to, to, to give up. You know, when the sun is about to rise and the day is about to dawn and the miracle you expect is just about to come and the things you have been expecting all these years, you have suffered enough and this is going to be the year of enjoyment and restoration. When everything you have desired, everything you have aimed at, everything you have dreamt of, everything is coming back to your life. If that is the time you give up, then isn't that a bad time? You didn't give up the other time. You almost died. You didn't give up the other time. The, the man, your husband, almost you know, beat your brain out. You didn't give up the other time after that terrible accident. You didn't give up the other time after that disappointment with your children. If you endured all that and just at the time now you are going to have a breakthrough, then you say, I'm quitting. You will not quit today. The Lord is saying, is anything too hard for me? This is not the time to quit. We're moving on. And we're going to have everything we have lost. We're going to have everything back in Jesus' name. And then in chapter 30, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. In chapter 30 of Jeremiah, this is why Jeremiah was thinking that, is there any point still moving on? 
And that's why the question came back to him. Is there anything too hard for me? Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 12. For thus says the Lord, thy bruise is incurable. Thy wound is grievous. Well, that's the, that's the reason to give up. Since my wound is incurable. And since the bruise is a grievous, what am I doing? Still staying with the Lord. In verse 13, there is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicine. That's why they wanted to give up. That's why Jeremiah thought, all right, why waste your time with somebody who is having a terminal case? The fellow is going to die anyway. Why waste your time, your resources, your energy on a person that the Almighty God has declared incurable? But then you must go on. Don't just stop there now, verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee. You thought it, it, the case was hopeless. You thought the case was incurable. That's the reason you were thinking there's no point moving on. And Godness says, read on. Don't stop in verse 13. In verse 17, I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wound, says the Lord. Because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion whom no man seeketh after. Now you understand why Jeremiah was wondering, Oh Lord, any point still moving on? Any point still holding on? Any point still being focused on the promises of God? And God says, Yes, because I am the God of all flesh. And is there anything too hard for me? Now, let's look at chapter 32 now, verse 17. Chapter 32, verse 17. Ah, Lord God. Jeremiah is waking up now. You will wake up. I said, oh, wake up. You know, you get to the point in your life where it's like, uh, you know, in my, you know, my, my things, one will draw the graph. Sometimes you go down into the valley. And then if you keep on tracing the graph, then you come up. And when you are in the valley, everything is dark. There's discouragement. There's depression. There's distress. And it appears that, uh, uh, why it not because you know that if somebody kills himself, he'll go to hell. He'll say, maybe it's even better to die than to live. But you remember that if somebody kills himself, it's going to go to a so, so okay, I'll stay there. Until, but God, can you please uh, help me out? I don't mind if you kill me at this time now because I'm not looking for any other thing. And all of a sudden, the sun begins to come up. All of a sudden, there is hope in your heart. All of a sudden, remember the promises of God you have forgotten. All of a sudden, you are praying, oh God, I don't want to die again. I want to see a new day. And I want to see the power of God walking in my life. All of a sudden, you are giving testimonies to other people. All of a sudden, you pick up your Bible where the Bible was almost covered with dust. And you dust off everything. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, Sunday morning, 11th of May, 2008, I see you in church. And you are here today. Something is going to happen to you. I said something is going to happen to you. Because now Jeremiah is rising up. And Jeremiah is saying, no, I'm not, I'm no more in that place in the valley of despondency anymore. In verse 17, chapter 32. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. There is nothing too hard for thee. Can we say that together? There is nothing too hard for thee. We'll experience that today in Jesus' name. Point number two now. Our comprehension. Our comprehension of God's promises. Our comprehension of God's promises. You know why Jeremiah said what he said? Because he now began to understand in a new way the promises of God. He now began to see what he didn't see before. The light was now shining and dawning in his heart. And because of this light that just came on now, that's why he too now chorused the answer. And he said, God, I, know, I understand now. I know. You are the God of all flesh and there is nothing that is too hard for thee. What dawned on him? What did he see? And what did he feel? What is he? Now he just woke up now. The comprehension of the promises of God. I'm going to Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 11. For the Lord 
has redeemed Jacob and has ransomed him from the hand of him that is stronger than he. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And that's, that's what brought problem into the heart of Jeremiah. He saw the Babylonians coming, and he saw they were mightier than Israel. He saw the thousands, hundreds of thousands of those people, they had iron boots, and they had golden helmets, and then their guns, they, they, they will never miss it. And he saw them in vision coming, and he said, we're through. We're finished. And now God said, I'm going to deliver Jacob from the enemy that is stronger and mightier than him. Oh, and there's nothing too difficult for God. Maybe you've seen that the enemy is stronger than you are. That your circumstances are greater than you can plow through. And because of that, you are going down and down. All of a sudden, you remember and you realize that God will deliver you from all the people that are stronger than you are. I don't care how much money they have, how many people they know. I don't care what connections they have. And they think they're going to use all their money, all their authority, all their power, all their connections to destroy you. They have failed already. And that's the reason why Jeremiah now came. He came up. He said, if you're going to deliver me from the one that is stronger than I, then I am all right. And this morning, I am all right. I said, I am all right. Look at this in verse 20 now. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I speak against him, I do earnestly remember him still. And you know the problem of Jeremiah? God told Jeremiah, go and tell those children of his, I hate what you do. Now, you must listen to God when he talks. When God says, I hate what you do, that's different from I hate you. That's different. How many times you pick your children, one of the children, you pick them at school. And then you see that, uh, you know, there's not, the one pair of shoes is gone. And then the bag is torn. And all that. And then you see that the appearance is very rough. You say, my, my boy, what's the matter? Where are your shoes? I don't know. Your bag, why is it torn? What did you do? I don't know. What are your books? Then you search the bag. Where are they? I don't know. I love you, but I hate what you do. You are my child. I love you. Have you ever said that? Using the words love and hate in the same sentence. I love you dearly. You're my only son. I love you, but I hate the people you are running with. I hate the people you are moving, but I love you. But you see, because God told Jeremiah, tell the children of Israel, I hate what you do. They thought he meant, I hate you. I don't have any interest in you. And because I hate you and I hate what you do, then Jeremiah said, why am I going to stay ministering to people that God hates? Why am I going to stay hanging out with people that God... Then God said, no, Jeremiah didn't get my message. It's Ephraim, verse 20. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I speak against him, I do honestly remember him still. Therefore, my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, says the Lord. The Lord will have mercy upon you. Oh yes, he may not appreciate that thing you said, that thing you did. And that's not you. That's what you did. It's your action. He hates the wrong action, but he loves the actor. He loves everyone. He loves us here today. I said he loves you here today. And it was that that now made Jeremiah to come back to say, Yes, now Lord, I understand what you're trying to get across. You still love us. You still love me. You still love the people of God. The covenant people of God. And the light began to dawn and to shine around him. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, it says, Behold, the days come says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. He said, they broke in the old covenant. And because they broke in the old covenant, it's like, you know, they are here and I am there. We are, you know, far apart. But now a new covenant is coming. In verse 33, but there shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in the 
here in what parts? Maybe you don't understand. This is what encouraged Jeremiah. And Jeremiah was kind of thinking, who am I, by the way, trying to help these children of Israel? Because I think about Moses, and Moses was a great man of God, and there is no way I can step into Moses' shoes. That's right. That's good humility. And then God sent the law, and he wrote it upon the tables of stone. But those children of Israel, before Moses came back from the mountain top, they had broken the law. Therefore, Moses too, he smashed the thing and broke everything. And those children of Israel, they were not able to keep that law till the days of Moses. And so, Jeremiah said, Moses who is greater than me, was not able to do it. Who am I? How can I do it? And God said, but I will do it. Lord, what are you going to do? You are going to write the law again. They are, they are broken over and over. Yes, I'm going to write it. Then can I present the stones to you to write on? He said, no. I'm going to write it now in their heart. It's going to be a greater ministry. And it's going to be a deeper, richer, broader ministry. And then they will take, you know the law, the law of Moses, you know where they put it? In the ark of the covenant. It's written on the stone and it's put in the ark. And there in the temple, in the holy of holies. But now I write it in their hearts and they take it back home. You take your heart back home and it is reaching on your heart and you take everything back home. Then when you are coming back again, you bring it here. And then when you are going back again, you take it back home. Isn't that better? I said, isn't that better? And Jeremiah, if you quit when a better ministry is coming, just because of the disappointment of the past, when the better days are here, and then you are hearing stories, then if you are not careful because of shame, you might not be able to come back. But thank God you have not gone. Thank God you are still here. And the better days will meet you here. And the better experiences will meet you here. And the greater thing the Lord is doing, it started already, and you are here when it's starting, until it finishes and completes, you will still be there. And that's what encouraged Jeremiah to say, oh Lord, if that is the case, I'm not running away again, I'm not, I'm not abandoning the ministry again, I am there, I am there. Thank God I am here too. I said, thank God I am here too. And the Lord will keep you stable in Jesus' name. And that's what he had. Then let's look at Jeremiah chapter 32. We're looking at verse 39. Our confidence in God's promises. In Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 39. And I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them. A part of the problem of Jeremiah was this. Jeremiah had a few people like Baruch, like Zedekiah, like others that supported him. Then some of the princes of Israel, they said, no, away with Jeremiah. It's not worthy to leave. Kill him off. And then it was torn in between two. When he came to this side, Jeremiah, go ahead. You're doing well. When he came to this, the same Israel, they'll say, no, you're a bad fellow. You don't have any love for us. You are supporting Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar. And then he said, oh Lord, I'm, I'm tired of this division. I'm tired of this confusion and the conflict. So when am I going to stop having all this conflict? And then God Almighty said, now I will give them one heart. The division you saw yesterday, you will not see today. And the breaking up you saw yesterday, you will not see today. You know, there are people, they, they've, been, they've been looking at the church and, and they have been saying, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I'm here today, I'm not sure what I'm going to be here tomorrow. Why? Because I'm confused. Look at this side, fighting against this side, and look at this other side, uh, throwing stones at this other side. Look at what I'm hearing from this area, and then when I go to this area, I hear another thing. Look at this local church, this local church, and look at all the differences and the conflicts. I don't want to stay in this place anymore anymore but god is going to give us one heart it's going to give us one way it's going to give us one word and then we move in the same direction why are you going to leave before the better days come those good days will meet me here i said it'll meet me here and that's what encouraged jeremiah when god said to jeremiah i will give them one heart 
and I will give them one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them in verse 40 and I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me we will not backslide again or not depart from the Lord anymore and that's what now I encourage Jeremiah and then Jeremiah said if that is the case then I can stay and I'm going to stay I said I'm going to stay Jeremiah chapter 33 and I'm reading from verse 3 call unto me and I will answer thee that's good Call unto me, Jeremiah. What problems do you have? What challenges do you have? What burdens do you have? And you are thinking, maybe I'm through. And the Lord is now saying, call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Do you know, there are some things you've never seen in your life, you'll begin to see. There are some breakthroughs you have been dreaming about and thinking about you've never had, you'll begin to have. And because God said, I will show you things that it will surprise you. And you will be surprised that something like this can happen to even you. Something is going to happen. In verse 6, behold, I will bring it hells and kill. I will kill them and I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Our confidence in God's promises. And that's what encouraged Jeremiah. And Jeremiah said, now I understand. Is there anything too hard for me? That same chapter 33. That is Jeremiah chapter 33. Look at verse 8. In verse 8 I will cleanse them from all their iniquity whereby they have sinned against me. I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed against me, the Lord will forgive. He will cleanse all the sins away, guilt, condemnation, everything will pass away. Verse 14, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised. Any promise you are holding on to and you prayed, you fasted and those promises have eluded you and you have not seen the fulfillment. Now God says, behold, the days come that says the Lord that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. Since he said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. Because he has the power. He will fulfill it in your life, in my life, in Jesus' name. Number one, the question among God's people. Number two, the comprehension of God's promises. Number three, our confidence in his glorious power. Our confidence in his glorious power. The power of the Lord is mighty and glorious. Everything the Lord has promised to do, he has the power to do. And from this day, he'll begin to do it. And you'll see the evidence in your life, even from today, in Jesus' name. Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. We're reading from verse 6 and verse 26. Exodus chapter 15, verse 6. Our confidence in his glorious power. The right hand, thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed in pieces the enemy. Our enemies are defeated. I said your enemies are defeated. It says in verse 26, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and do that which is right in his sight, and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of those diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians. Any disease upon the Egyptians will not be upon you in Jesus' name. You know what I've discovered? I've discovered that those who don't know the Lord, there are some peculiar, peculiar diseases they have because of their lifestyle, because of the things they do. Because of their covenant with the evil one. And you are not in covenant with the evil one. Am I right? 
And you are not part of them in the world. Am I right? If you are not taking part in their sin, you will not take part in their suffering. If you are not taking part in their evil, you will not, not take part in the demons that are afflicting them. And it says, all those diseases upon the Egyptians, I will not bring them upon you. And if you have any disease upon you that looks like, this one looks like an Egyptian disease. This one is an Asian flu. And I'm not an, I'm not an Asian, I'm a Christian. This one looks like a Nigerian calamity. And I'm not number one Nigerian. Who am I? I'm a Christian. I belong to the kingdom of God. And because of where I belong, therefore all those things that happen to the outsiders will not happen to the insider. I'm not an outsider. I said I'm not an outsider. I am a member of the body of Christ in, this, in the kingdom of God. I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God. And anything happening to those people outside the kingdom, watch me very well, and I look at you very well, it will not be upon you, it will not be upon me. Because we are inside. The disease of the outsider will not come upon your life. And then he says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Are you healed? Yes. I said, are you healed? Yes. And you know, it, it doesn't take any sweating. You know, I was in an interview yesterday, and the person interviewing me said, looks like, uh, you know, when you want to pray, other people, when they want to pray, they jump and they run and they beat the air. And it, you, then he, he, says, he says they do acrobatic or something. I said, uh, no, it's easier than that. It's the name of Jesus. It's not our jumping. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not acrobatic display. And today, once we just mentioned disease in your life, Vanish away before you open your eyes, it's gone. Yeah. And all those things, and you know, without sweating and without fighting anything, because Jesus fought the battle on the cross of Calvary. And because He won your case already, no hassle, no problem, and there's no difficulty anymore. And the Lord has healed you in Jesus' name. And so He says, I will not bring those diseases upon you which are brought upon the Egyptians. I am the Lord that. Healeth thee. We're well, looking at, um, at Deuteronomy chapter 23. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 5. It says, Nevertheless, the Lord thy God will not hearken unto Balaam. Any Balaam that is hired against you and they want to destroy your life, the Lord will not listen to them. I said, the Lord will not listen to them. He said, nevertheless, the Lord thy God will not hearken unto Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because the Lord thy God loves thee. Every curse is turned to a blessing. Because the power of God is a glorious power. And it's going to use that glorious power to deliver you from every attack and every evil in Jesus' name. Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 23. Our confidence in God's power. Our confidence in his glorious power. In Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. God is not a man that he shall lie. Neither the son of man that he shall repent. As he said, and shall he not do it? As he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. The blessing of God upon your life today will never be reversed. Because of the power of God, you know that today you are in for blessing. And the blessing will come. It will be permanent in Jesus' name. In Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18 verse 27. Luke chapter 18 verse 27. And he said, The things which are impossible with men, the things which are impossible with men, are possible with God. Have you been told that something is impossible? You think that, you know, you want to have this and uh, the people in authority or the people with knowledge and the people with experience, they said, how can that be? That is impossible. I come to tell you today, it is possible here. Job chapter 42. Job chapter 42, reading from verse 2. 
I know that thou canst do everything. That's what you need to know. I know that you can do virtually everything. And everything in your life, the Lord will do it. And whatever the challenges are, you come to this same knowledge that Job came to. You see the problem. When the problem came on Job, he worshipped God, yes. He prayed to God, yes. And then all these friends came and engaged him in dialogue, in argument. You must have seen. No, I didn't sin. I know my life. I love the Lord. And why is this upon you? Until Job came to the point, he said, friends, Leave me alone. Go your way. You are not helping me. All your counseling, all your complaint, and all your argument is getting me deeper and deeper into the hole out of which I want to climb. Therefore, go your way. And then he came now to God and God began to talk to him. And then he said, God, you know what? Now I know. No argument again. If I don't understand this, understand that, why this happened, why that happened, I'm not going to bother myself again. One thing I know. You can do all things. That was the chapter and the day when all his problems are solved. Stop the argument and stop the reasoning and stop all the discussion with the people that don't understand your situation and then analyze sin and figuring out and this and that. And the more we figure out, the more confusion we have. No more argument again. One thing I know today, God can do everything. And God will do everything. And this, the day you come to that realization, the chapter that tells you that you are, that you know that God can do everything, that's the chapter that is going to make you have the victory in Jesus' name. And you'll find that in verse 12, so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. And today I come to tell you, your latter end will be better than the beginning in Jesus' name. The darkness is gone. The clouds are gone. The confusion is gone. Now we're going to enjoy the bright day of the prosperity and the blessing of God in Jesus' name. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job than the beginning. And now we come to Psalm 62. Psalm 62. What are you doing from verse 11? Psalm 62 verse 11. God has spoken once and twice have I had this that power belongeth unto God. And this God is my father. I said he is my father. And power belongs unto him. Because of that, today, something good is beginning in our lives. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Now unto him that is able. Is your God able? Look at Abraham before the almighty God. All you need to know, God is able. Look at the children of Israel before the Red Sea. As they were thinking they were going to drown. All they needed to know, God is able. Look at the children of Israel around the walls of Jericho. All they needed to know without shooting any gun is that our God is able. And look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego just before the furnace of fire. All we need to know is that God is able. Look at Daniel before the lion's den. All you need to know is that God is able. And look at the children, the disciples of Christ as were behind the closed door as if those uh, Pharisees and Sadducees and the, and the council and the Sanhedrin, as if they were the almighty, as if they had the final say and the final decision in the life of everyone. But all that you need to know disciple is that God is able. And as you come to that realization this morning or this afternoon, I believe things are going to change. Now unto him that is able, able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. And we're going to pray. And before we pray, you know, sometimes when you are praying, you say something, oh God, this, this, this is what I want you to do for me. All of a sudden, in your heart, you say, am I not asking too much? Is that not too high, so big, too great? Who said that? How could I open my mouth and say, Lord, do this for me? Is that not too much? Look at this, now unto him. 
that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to according to what the power the power that walketh outside in us inside this place there's a power that will move every mountain a power that will heal every sickness. A power that will bring solution to every problem in our lives. Now unto him be glory in the church. Which church? I said in which church? In this church. Now unto him be glory in this church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. And the people of God said... Now I agree with Jeremiah. Lord, you are the almighty God. And with you, nothing shall be impossible. You are the God of all flesh. There is nothing too hard for you. I look at my life. I look at the challenges I face. I say now everything is easy. Because with my God this day, nothing shall be impossible. How about you? Why don't you rise up and tell the Lord, that's what you believe, that's what you believe, that's what you believe. No crying anymore, no anxiety anymore, no worry anymore. There's no fear of anybody under the sun anymore. Because nothing, nothing shall be impossible unto him. He is the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Look at those challenges in your life. Look at all those difficulties in your life. And just say, Lord, I know. Lord, I know. You can do all things. You can do all things. And nothing is too hard for you. I bring this problem before you. I bring this challenge before you. I bring this difficulty before you. The challenge on my boy. The challenge on my daughter. The challenge on my wife, the challenge on my husband, the challenge in our family, the challenge in the work I'm doing, the challenge in my private personal life. I bring this challenge before you. Here is my confidence. Lord, there's nothing too hard for you. The light is coming on. The day is done. The cloud is passing away. The fear is going away. The heaviness of heart is not going away. The sadness, the gloom, everything is passing away. A new day, a new dawn. A new era, a time of joy, a time of happiness, a time of the light, of the glory of God in your life. You've seen those promises? You've seen what the Lord said he will do? Rejoice in those promises. Accept what the Lord said he'll do. And your very life over to God. Let him handle everything. The sins of the past, let him forgive. The guilt, the condemnation for evil that has been done, let him take away the guilt. Let him cancel the condemnation. Accept the death of Jesus Christ for you on the, death, on the cross of Calvary. I say, Lord, I accept the forgiveness. I accept your salvation. 
I accept that eternal life. Accept this new relationship with the Lord. Reconciliation with the Almighty God. Lord, I accept. Now there's a new relationship. Now there's a new fellowship. Of the Almighty God through the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and your Savior. Accept the grace of God that flows into your life now. And He promises you a righteous law in your heart, a righteous word in your heart. And now, in the strength of the Lord, in the power of the Spirit of God, now you can go and live by that word reaching in your heart. Then he says he'll heal you. Accept the healing. He said he'll deliver you. Accept the deliverance. He said, even incurable diseases will be healed. Accept. Every yoke is broken. Accept. And be established in the truth. Settle everything with the Lord today. Don't go back into the dungeon, into the valley of despair, despondency again. Hold on to those promises that will never fail. No worry. No anxiety anymore because the Lord is still on the throne. You can't give up again, you can't go back again. Don't hurt yourself. Help has come, the solution has come to your problem. Accept, believe, and then praise the name of the Lord that you know that God has done what He promised to do. Praise the name of the Lord that you know. Show gratitude to the Lord for what He has done. Thank him and praise him. The Almighty God, he cannot fail. Now, unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask. Or think by the power that walketh in us unto him the glory in the church through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Hold on to those promises, accept those promises. Believe those promises that from this very day, things will never be the same again in your life. And thank the Lord for what he has done. Bless his name. 
It saves. It heals. It delivers. It sets his people free. And he accomplishes what seems impossible in our lives. And today he has done it. And he'll put a testimony in your mouth. Great day. Wonderful day. Great, great day. And as a confirmation of what the Lord said, He will do. A confirmation of what God said, He will do. Stand on those promises, they'll never fail. The promises of God will never, never fail. Stand on those promises. And after the service, don't allow any negative talk to come back to you. Hold on to the confidence you have in the Lord. What he has done, he has done. And nobody can reverse it. And just keep on praising the name of the Lord. For the rest of the week. For the rest of the month. For the rest of the year. Why not for the rest of your life? And stay with the Lord. Don't give in to all the thoughts of the past. Of departing from the Lord. Stay. Stay with the Lord. Great things are ahead of you. That he wants to accomplish. That he wants to do. This is just the beginning. Stay with the Lord. And he has said, I'll continue with you. And you make up your mind, you'll continue with him too. Make a covenant with the Lord that nothing will break your relationship with the Lord again. Now that you know, that he makes a new covenant with you. And he writes his word in your very heart. So that now you follow the Lord for the rest of your life. Seal everything with the blood of Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Tell him to give you grace to remain faithful, loyal, committed, and yielded to the word of the Lord, to the will of the Lord for the, for the rest of your life. He'll do it. Yes, he'll do it. Total commitment to the Lord. Never to go back from the Lord anymore. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. And the good church said, yeah. Amen. 
We're going to pray together. You yeah, close your eyes. Everything you have told the Lord, all these minutes you've been speaking to the Lord, I'm going to have everything confirmed. Yeah. Every need is met. Yeah. Every problem is solved. Yeah. Every sickness is healed. Yeah. Every Christian experience, you ask the Lord for the strength to live a righteous, victorious life. It's confirmed in Jesus' name. And the promise you said, you're going to stay with the Lord for the rest of your life. Nothing will break that promise. And now things will become better and better, higher and higher, greater and greater in your life in Jesus' name. No more worry, no more anxiety, no more heartache, no more high blood pressure. And that miracle you said, I've given up. I'm not even expecting it again. Well, I'm expecting it myself. It's going to come. I said it's going to come. And God will give you a pleasant supernatural surprise in Jesus' name. Can we raise up our hands as we pray together? Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you at this time. We know this has been a wonderful day. You've asked us the question and then we've given the answer. You said, is there anything too hard for you to do in our lives, in our families, in our church? And Lord, we say, you are the almighty God, the God of all flesh. There is nothing too hard for you to do. And therefore, we want a confirmation, affirmation of that. Even at this time, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that every mountain and hill will be leveled in our lives in Jesus' name. Every demonic oppression and power of darkness, I come against them now and I destroy them in the lives of all your people in Jesus' name. That sickness, even though the world might have called it incurable, there is cure today. There is healing today. And Lord, I pray that long-standing sickness be healed right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for every child in every family that the parents have been concerned about. I pray, oh Lord, that thing that brings that concern, roll it away now. Take all the heart aches in the family. Take everything away in Jesus' name. And Lord, those who are still lacking, they, they're looking for this, they've not got it. Looking for that, they've not got it. You promised us there's no lack anymore. I pray that you supply every need in every life, in every family, in Jesus' name. And Lord, spiritual strength to live a victorious life. The grace to live consistently. And the love to follow you consistently. Give to everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray and confirm nobody goes out here empty-handed. A blessing, a miracle, a deliverance, a healing, a provision, a job, a wife, a husband, a child, a certificate, a breakthrough. Whatever it is, oh Lord, give it in Jesus' name. And Lord, we seal all the evil in the past, we put a seal on them. We're not going to see them again. All those Egyptians who have seen that drowned in the Red Sea of this day, Lord, we pray they'll never come up again. The affliction will not come up again. The attack will not come up again. The weakness will not come up again. The tiredness will not come up again. The depression will not come up again. The joblessness will not come up again. And the suicide spirit will not come up again in Jesus' name. Lord, from this day, something good has started already. The dawn that has come now, I pray it will blossom to the noon day. And I pray there will be testimony everywhere. Lord, I just pray in the day, in the night, there will be peace of mind. Rest in every soul. Joy in every heart. And Lord, I pray adequately you provide for every family. And Lord, this church, this church from glory to glory. And you will honor your people, your name in this church in Jesus' name. All our various locations in this whole land, in UK, Britain, Lord, I pray, will be tasting your power. And people, when they come in, they will know God is in this place, we know. 
And Lord, I pray for all the leaders, the workers, the members, and invitees. I pray this day will be a turning point in every life. Yeah. Will never be the same again. Yeah. The joy of the Lord will never stop in our lives. Yeah. And the cup of blessing will run over every time. Yeah. Confirm it in every heart, yeah. in every life. Yeah. This day is a day of joy. Yeah. Who have started laughing will never cry. Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus.